What's going on guys? Uh, today we're going to show you how to remedy the Bank 1 Sensor 1 O2 sensor faults on a 01 to 06 Toyota Camry. Uh, this particular one is a 2006 XLE model with the 3 liter V6. Now the complaint here is that uh, the maintenance required light's been on for a while. That's probably for an oil change. But uh, suddenly the vehicle stability control and traction control lights are on as well as the engine lights. I'll show you that now. Takes a minute after you start it to trigger. Should pop up. You see the engine lights on there. We have vehicle stability control and traction off. And no, the traction light and switch did not get triggered. As you see, when I push the traction light, it does not change anything. So there is a fault there. So I've hooked up my scan tool and selected analog brakes. This does have traction and vehicle stability control as we see on the dash. So we're gonna click that one. Go to codes. Now this one is new, this wasn't here before. Zero point calibration, yaw rate sensor undone. So that is probably why the stability control fault is on. But before that, this code was not active. Uh, it just had the engine control systems fault. So then I went to the engine faults. The only engine fault at the time was one for bank one sensor, one O2 sensor. So since that other yaw rate sensor code was not there before, I'm wondering if the uh, engine light could possibly be triggering the traction and the vehicle stability control light. So as you can see, air fuel ratio O2, bank one sensor one. So we're gonna try and test it real quick. Gonna pull the hood release here. Lift up on the hood release latch. Now depending on the year and model and engine of your particular vehicle, um, it's going to be slightly different sizes and steps here. In this specific engine, the 3 liter for the 2006 Camry, um, I was hoping the upstream bank one sensor one was going to be this sensor right here, but of course it has to be the hard one, which is back there. It's a V6. This is technically the front of the engine with the pulleys on it. Um, bank one is there, bank two is here. So we're gonna have to do the majority of this job from the underside of the car, which is gonna require jacking it up um, pretty high so we can get under it and supporting it with jack stands. But before we just throw a sensor at this, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of checking here because the sensor for this particular one, um, they were all over $150, so we just don't wanna shotgun parts at it. What we wanna do is check the fuse box. And again, this is an 06 Camry XLE with a three liter V6. As you see, there's a 25 amp fuse marked AF, that's air fuel. Um, Toyota calls this the air fuel sensor instead of the oxygen sensor or O2 sensor. So we wanna check that 25 amp fuse, make sure it's not blown. And then there's a relay over here as well marked air fuel heater. Uh, we want to make sure that both of those are good. There's a little fuse holder here that you just pinch to pull out and you can use it. Here's that 25 amp. We're going to grab and pull it out and just check this. Focus. There you go. You can see it's a complete circuit in there. The little uh, piece in there, the connector is not broken or blown. So that's good. Now, as far as the air fuel heater, we're going to go ahead and that should be this one right here. We're going to unplug it. And you can test relays. I'm not gonna get into that in this video though. We're just gonna swap it with another one of these blue ones because they should be the same relay. We'll swap them uh, and then clear the codes with my scanner and see if the code comes back. Uh, before, when I was clearing the code, this O2 sensor code would come back instantly. So if we swap relays and it comes back again, then we're gonna move on. These relays do get stuck in there pretty good. So you gotta just get a good hold on it and wiggle and pull until you get it. Um, you may need to use a pair of pliers, but don't squeeze too hard. You don't wanna crush or damage the relays. So now we're gonna take this one and move it over here and take the one from this slot and plug it in here Then clear out our codes. So there's the air fuel ratio heater control circuit bank one sensor one fault code. We're gonna go back and clear it. And now we're gonna start the car. The light's currently off. There it is, it came back on. So now that the engine light's on, yep. Now it triggered the vehicle stability control and the traction control again. That's so strange. 
So now let's see if it threw that code again. P0031. Yep, same code. So at this point, it's probably not the relay and it's not the fuse. So at this point, we're talking either a bad O2 sensor or air fuel sensor um, or bad wiring between the sensor and the engine uh, ECM or a bad engine ECM. So likely be replacing the sensor. So now I'm going to put the vehicle in park, set the parking brake and chalk the wheels and then jack up the car by the front main cross member and support with stands on both sides since we're going to be under it. Um, I've got the stands kind of towards the front of the main support on each side. That way they're spread farther apart and they're kind of forward out of my way. So there should be four O2 sensors or air fuel sensors on this particular engine. So I'm going to show you where they're at in case you're doing uh, sensor replacement, but not the exact same one as me. So this is going to be bank two. Bank two sensor one is right here. Now we're under the car. So this is the front. There's the radiator up there. And we're just on the bottom side of the catalytic converter on the same bank that the bank two sensor one O2 sensor is at. Now we're under the cat. This is bank to sensor two. And then we'll move over just a little bit to this pipe. This is gonna be, again, after the catalytic converter, but this is for bank one. It's gonna be bank one, sensor two. And then the one we're doing, of course, is the hardest one to get at, uh, bank one, sensor one, up there above the catalytic converter. So here I am now behind the front wheels under the car. So we already showed you the three sensors up there. Then there's a flex pipe here. And then it comes to what looks like is actually a third catalytic converter uh, followed by a resonator. And then after the resonator, it goes all the way to the end where the muffler is at. You're replacing bank one, sensor one, like I am. You're gonna look above this cross member where the sway bar is. And you can just barely see it right there. Focus, there we go, that's the sensor that we gotta get out. It's gonna be real fun, because we also have to find and reach the end of the electrical connector to undo that. Um, this socket, as you can see, there's wires going into it. Uh, my O2 sensor does not have a core, so the easiest way to get this out is gonna be to cut those wires at the end of the sensor and then put a socket on it, which should be a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter. Uh, if you do have a core on your sensor, which means that you have to bring the old sensor back for a core credit, uh, you cannot cut the wires because then they won't give you your core credit. In that case, you'll need to use a wrench. Uh, they do also make special O2 sensor sockets that I'll post in the video description if you want to buy. Uh, they're basically just a 7 8 or 22 mil socket that has a slot cut out for them so you can slip them over the wires. So I apologize that this is in such a crummy spot so I can't really get my hand up there to point and tell you what to do. But so we follow. Again, now I've moved forward on the car just a little bit. I'm basically directly under the transmission and looking up here at the exhaust manifold, which is right there. Um, so here's the O2 sensor again, bank one, sensor one. Now you'll see, hopefully you can see, that the top, you can see there's a line right there. There's a connector and it's a two-piece connector. There's a little tab way up right here. And I'm gonna push the tab in on the top connector and that top connector is actually secured to a metal bracket right here. So what we're gonna do is push that tab in and at the same time uh, pull down on the bottom half of the connector and that should separate the O2 sensor. Now, if you're having trouble getting it disconnected, what I did is I fished one arm up the left side of this catalytic converter and then I put my other arm up through this hole to reach up and grab that connector push this tab in and pull out. If you're having trouble disconnecting this, even with two hands, try pushing the connectors together because what can happen is if, if you don't get this uh, tab fully depressed, uh, it won't lift the, the little tooth enough to unplug it. So push them together as tight as you can. Then make sure you push this top tab all the way in as hard as you can with one hand while you pull down on this connector and you'll get it free. And now all we have to do is get this out of here. Now, if you have an extremely rusted O2 sensor, you're gonna wanna use a torch of some sort to heat up the bung 
that the sensor threads into. Otherwise, you could possibly round off the sensor or strip out the threads, and then you'll have a hard time getting this sensor out and the new one in. You'll have damage to your exhaust manifold. So like I said, no core on my sensor. I will therefore take the easy way out and cut these wires with a side cutter. Make sure the connector doesn't fall in the face. Now, if you absolutely can't reach up there or whatever, you can undo this heat shield. It looks like it just kind of pulls. Uh, it's got a little piece that wraps around this bracket. It just kind of pulls off of there, but it's pretty stiff. It's kind of hard to do. And there's a couple parts there where it clips on. So I'm gonna try and do it without. Um, just make sure that whatever you use, whether it's a socket or a wrench, you get it on there um, as far as you can. As you see, the heat shield is kind of in the way. And so I'm having to, I'm using a wrench. So I really didn't have to cut that uh, sensor wiring, but whatever, didn't have to fish that through the eyelid of the wrench. But now you can see that I have the wrench on it and I'm pushing towards the heat shield because as you can see, I'm not on it very far and you can push in on it and force the heat shield on more. You can see it flexing. So I'm, I'm on there as far as I can. Remember lefty loosey, righty tighty, counterclockwise to loosen. So I've got the wrench coming off towards uh, the driver's side. This is the driver's side. And I'm laying under it looking up. So I got the wrench pointing towards the driver's side, seven eighths. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull down on it. And hopefully, <clears throat> I think it's going. And I can't, <laughs> I can't get much wiggle room here. You get like one bite, one tooth each time you rotate it. But yeah, it's moving, I think, yeah. Might be able to get it by finger. That's wishful thinking though. So we just gotta keep loosening it until we get the old one out. And then we can put our new one in. Careful not to drop a wrench or ratchet or socket or sensor, anything on your face. Cause when you're down here, you can't move very quick out of the way. There we go. And it looks like our threads are still good. So our bung that this threads into should be in good shape. That's nice to see. Now I will say this, um, at this point, since we checked the relay and the fuse, I'm kind of shotgunning a sensor at it at this point, but the code is for the heater circuit. So here's the new O2 sensor that I'm putting in. Um, you want to check and see if the sensor has any anti-seize on the threads. If it does not, um, see if it came with any. This one did. So I'm going to put a little bit on the threads. Um, if it did not come with some, I recommend you getting some anti-seize and putting it on here. That way, if you ever have to change this again, uh, it'll come apart without any hassle. I'll put links for the sensor and the anti-seize in the video description. Make sure when you're putting anti-seize on the threads that you do not get it on the tip here or in any of these holes that can plug up the holes and make it so the sensor does not read properly and your engine light will still be on. A word of caution with anti-seize, anything you touch, it's gonna transfer. Like if I barely touched it with my finger, uh, next thing you know, it's gonna be all over your arms and your shirt and your shorts and your pants. It gets everywhere. So be really careful not to touch this and smear it onto the tip like I was saying. We're just gonna put a little bit all the way around the threads and then get underneath and install our new sensor. Uh, this freaking AC hose is dripping water on me. Hit me in the face while I was down here. NICs is on, made sure not to get any on the end, kept it on the threads. Now we are going to fish it up there without trying to touch anything and get it into the bung. Righty tighty. It's kind of hard to do with the uh, connector attached to it. So don't get frustrated. It might take you a few minutes to get it started. You definitely don't want to cross thread it. Um, if it starts and then stops, you probably got it cross threaded. As you can see, I'm spinning it no problem now. So I know I have it started correctly. And we're just gonna get it tight by finger and then cinch it up with the wrench. There is a crush sleeve gasket on it that'll kind of seal everything up. So now if we have our wrench, you know, if we're on the ground looking up at the car, if we got our wrench facing the driver's side again, instead of pulling down, we're gonna push up to tighten the sensor. And, you know, you just want it kind of snug. You don't have to really reef on it. A 7 eighths wrench is a decent size wrench. You'll kind of just feel it snug up. You don't have to push too tight so once you get it tight by finger i would say like another half a revolution with the wrench or just until it feels tight now we're going to direct the connector make sure it's not rubbing on anything too bad and get the little tab here line it up with the retainer clip on the upper connector gently push and you want to hear a click like that and now we're good 
gonna tuck this out of the way so it's not rubbing on anything. You don't want it resting on the exhaust either. So now you'll need your own scanner or go to the auto parts store and rent one. We'll need to clear out the engine codes. Got the key on right now. Clear the codes. Now we're gonna go back and see if there's any engine codes at all now that have cleared them, see if anything came back instantly. No current codes. No history codes. And no pending codes. Now let's go see if that stability control um, code can be cleared out now. Like I said, this one has ABS with traction and vehicle stability control. I'm go to see what we've got here. See, now we don't have an engine code. Um, we just have one for the yaw rate sensor. So that might be a separate problem, but it, hopefully we've got the O2 sensor figured out at least. Clear the codes, see what happens. Go back, see what we got. The yaw one cleared out. So we'll see what happens when we start it. We'll see if that stays out. So now the maintenance required light is just saying that we need an oil change so i'm not too worried about that i'm going to give it a minute here it would take about 15 to 30 seconds for the engine light to kick on and the vehicle stability control and the traction light and it looks like we're good so i would say mission accomplished on the o2 sensor if that vehicle stability control and traction light comes back it'll probably be for that yaw sensor and i'll have to do that sensor as well but I think for now we're good on the engine light issue. So that is how you identify and replace and troubleshoot the O2 sensor on your Toyota Camry. Now we'll make sure everything is out from under the vehicle. Lower the jack stands, remove them, and carefully and slowly lower the car down. Don't forget to unchock the wheels and release the parking brake. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.